Okay, um, I was gonna make, it's not very clean in there. I don't know if you can even see that. I keep getting distracted. I was supposed to make a little video of me um, making some delicious oxtail curry, but I still haven't got to it because I started talking about mise en scene and then ended up doing a 10 minute video on that. And then started talking about my pressure cooker and then ended up doing a 15 minute video on that. I hope this time, okay, you know what? I'm gonna make sure I do the video now because I've done enough practice for my um, YouTubing and on-screen presence and presentation skills, etc., etc., which is what this channel is for. Um, therefore, I'm not gonna cut and edit anything. You get it all unedited and raw. Lucky you, and um, if you're still here, wow, great of you for watching. And um, if you can make it to the end, you're amazing, because I think most people would have died of boredom by then, or fallen asleep, which is what you can use this video for as well. This whole entire channel is good to help you sleep. And I'm gonna drink some coffee, because I've been talking nonstop for like probably half an hour now. And then we will actually go and make um, some oxtail curry. Uh, though I have pre-made the oxtail, so. I'll go through all that, just have a drink first. Ah, uh, delicious iced coffee. All right, let's do it for real this time. I'm gonna focus. Get that in the way so I can, um, my tripod so I can uh, do it without one hand later. So, I have pressure cooked my oxtail beforehand. It's been in the fridge, so that's why it's all cold and that white stuff is actually the oxtail fat. Um, the previous video I've already explained partially the uh, pressure cooker there, but um, basically I bought this in a, uh, I bought $80 Hong Kong worth of oxtail and cooked a whole bunch of it uh, beforehand. Uh, like in a big batch and then the rest of it I put in here so I could slowly modify my, my recipes so you know I made oxtail spaghetti now I'm gonna turn this into a curry um, and a spaghetti curry because I have spaghetti so first thing first thing first thing okay let's get this on a uh, tripod now I should slow down a bit I think I'm probably going a little slow because I am cognizant that um, my channel is boring and I kind of want to speed it up but then if you're watching this you're not really worried about being fast and all that so I should just slow it down take a breath and do it at a normal speed all right good thing I practice this is what the whole channel is about it's not really to try to get views um, but you know I, I want to do something interesting it's more fun for me too and um, I'm sure someone is getting some uh, at least maybe even one person is getting some use out of this like value is what I mean so can I see that yes all right I've got my fire maple it's really cool I think they copied someone but it's a it's a uh, kind of large chopping board which you can fold and uh, pour stuff easy. So, first step, let's get on to this. Oh, I didn't mise on send my uh, water jug. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Now, uh, oh, move the tripod. Um, okay, now that's out of the way. We are gonna cut this onion up. Actually, I've got, I'm gonna cut probably one and a half onions. So, uh, I've already cut that open, so I'm gonna one and a half and have a spare that's fresher if you know what I mean so I'm gonna cut this one can you see my awesome skills hope it's in focus okay okay so keep myself an onion there actually this onion has been in the fridge for like I'm, I'm not kidding like two months at least and it gets a little dry see the layers but um most of it is still good like now it's got two layers of unfresh you know unedible stuff but like after you peel that off it's a uh, fresh onion like quite edible two months like that's pretty impressive like if, if this was like a lettuce or something or you know spinach or something it would be like 
I'd have to throw it out. It'd turn to yellow and then um, it'd go moldy and it'd be horrible. But onions, they do seem to last. And I somehow recall onions not require, require, requ requiring um, refrigeration. Um, I don't know. I think we just kept them in a in a box at home or well, in Australia. Maybe we just didn't have room in the fridge, or it's like you know a long-lasting um, vegetable. Oops, oops. So was that the one I was going to keep? Can't remember now. Anyway, I put that away. Actually, got myself a little working space here in the bench, which is a uh, kind of a kind of a luxury. I should like mise en scène better. Like, okay, that that can go away. Put that in the uh, dishwasher. Um, I'm not going to move the camera. You're just going to have to. Oh, well, you've probably seen my dishwasher if you watch this extremely, extremely long-winded channel. I'm going to make myself some more room, like I said. Okay. Um, cut up the onion. So, uh, going to get rid of all these bits. This is going to be a very long video, and I am really hungry now. Oh, my knife's not very sharp either, but, uh, I can't turn the, you can't see what I'm doing, because, like, like, my hand's in the way. Anyway. Maybe one day I'll be able to hire a camera operator. Okay, this is how I dice onions, by the way. You cut it like that, and then I just go... I mean, I don't see many people doing it this way, but I think this is the best way, um, because when you cut it one way and then you cut it here, it's already going to break apart. Oh, I should have got some good goggles before I did this, because I've been... Um, I know what's going to happen next. I'm going to be have tears... I'm going to cry, I'm going to have tears in my eyes in a minute. Um, oh well, if I do it fast... And they say... Oh, it's coming, I can feel it. They say a sharp knife actually um, helps reduce the uh, amount of onion gas, you know, tear gas. But I don't really think that it's true. I mean, it makes sense because the sharper the knife, the less you're going to burst the little microscopic cells in there which hold the gas. They're like little bubbles filled with like onion gas. Um, but uh, and, uh, and to make this less boring I'm going to move the camera away a bit so you can see me. That's as wide as it's going to get unfortunately. But it is a 16 millimeter lens which is quite wide but it's going to be uh, cropped in because I'm going to stabilize it. Oh no, runny nose. Okay, I'm going to go blow my nose now. Oh, my wires are caught up. All right, um, can't see, but oh, blow my nose. No, I'm cooking for myself, so, you know, I'm only going to get my own germs, but I'm going to wash my hands anyway. It's a good habit. Um, because you don't want to be one of those chefs that um, doesn't wash their hands. And the worst is you go to a restaurant, like a cheap restaurant, like a bar or something, and then you go to the toilet, and then the chef he uh, uses the urinal, or worse, you know what? You know, he uses the toilet, comes out, and he doesn't wash the hands, and then you realize he's actually the chef of the pub, and you're eating like. I don't know, something from the restaurant that's not fully cooked, like a raw, rare steak. Or oh, actually, a rare steak probably wouldn't touch his hands. Something that, I, I, you know what would be the worst? A, a sushi chef who's not even Japanese, because I think someone with Japanese would be very hygienic. Like, like a, a sushi chef that's not Japanese, you can make the, you know, nation, the race in your own mind. But anyway, non-Japanese chef going to the toilet flushing coming out and then um not washing his hands and then you realize you just ate or oh, or he goes to the kitchen then you you kind of um are about to order i don't know what's worse check that stub stub out okay 
rinse off my chef's knife and we're going to start the basis of the curry uh, this is also a curry based on what I have um, because like I don't really have all the ingredients actually I'm just going to flip the screen around so I can actually see so I can actually see what it's recording oh cool let me get my framing right okay so I've got my onions I'm going to turn on my um, me induction cooker, which is actually all cracked up. I don't know if you can see from there, but a glass fell and cracked the glass surface of it. So, uh, still works. I'm too poor to buy a, uh, a new one and it still works. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going to make a healthy curry. So I've got some Chinese from Taobao olive oil. And actually you need a little bit of oil for curry. So, um, should I measure it? Maybe not. Um, it's going to pour into the cold pan, it doesn't matter. And uh, you need a little bit. So uh, I'm going to move the camera so you can actually see it this time. Alright, so I've got some... I've got some uh, oil there. Olive oil was the one I chose. It will probably imp impart a bit of flavor to the curry, but that's fine. I mean, curry is all mixed anyway. and. Olive oil is supposed to be healthier, so got some um, olive oil. Now, next thing I'm going to do, uh, I might as well one hand it for a while until I get annoyed. I'm going to put in the onion, but actually I should put in the garlic as well. So, I don't think I even have any garlic. Um, yeah, that's no garlic left. I should clear that. Oh, that's getting hot. So I'm going to turn down. You can see it's steaming. I'm going to turn it to like one and then um, try to one hand this onion thing this is great it got off Taobao and then yeah that's my base for the curry I need two hands now I can't really kind of felt like using the camera to scrape it off but um like kind of like like that but uh that's probably not the best idea so um okay, back back to the tripod you go. Make sure that's in tight. Okay. Good. Okay. Being a bit paranoid, making sure my camera is locked in because I don't want to have a cam my camera fall. That would be horrible. It's like when I had a Peak Design Velcro bag and like all my stuff falls out of it. Terrible. Okay, so that's that. Um, this could just get a little rinse and then I can, uh, don't need to wash it. Yep, so put that away. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna saute the onions. Probably can go back to handheld now. It's kind of a skill to be able to cook one-handed while blogging and filming yourself. Okay, so my heat is a bit low. I'm going to up that a bit. And uh, I'm just going to soften these onions. The onions are actually the base for a curry. Um, I got this recipe from online, but I kind of adapted. So it's not really a... I, w I guess it's not like a completely authentic curry. It's like a curry using whatever I have. It's still going to taste good, so don't worry. Alright, you can probably hear that sizzle. Now, uh, let's go through my spices. I'm going to use the most, like, curry... The things that would make the most sense for curry. Oh, that's sizzling, so I'm going to turn it down a bit, and get it to a nice sizzle. Soften the onions. Well, right, this is a quite a big batch. I'm probably going to cook all that, but I'm going to have a bit left over, so... Uh, I could eat that later. Okay, so, um, so black pepper, yeah, that's kind of curry-like. Uh, cumin powder, that's very, uh, that's very um, curry-like. So, I might use this one. I want to get rid of one of these. I've got like cumin, cumin, cumin. I think oh, only two. Thought I had another one. 
What's this? Oh, instant matcha latte. I should make that later. Spaghetti sauce. Okay. Sichuan pepper. So maybe not so much of that this time. Okay. Five spice. Um, it's more Chinese, but like uh, Indian and Pakistani the curries, they use a similar thing. It's like their version of five spice. Uh, it's almost the same as mas masala or something. Masala? I don't know. Um, I I'm a bit of a hack, but uh, I'm going to put that in, like a lot of that. Okay, and some other things. Okay, so here we have, oh, more cumin. So I did have three. And this is quite a nice little um, bottle, so I should put them all together. And then we have galangal, which is more Thai. Um, which is more Thai, but, um, you know, it's like ginger, so... That will do. And we have turmeric. I think turmeric is quite important for for curry. Um, depends what curry, but yeah, that that will work. Oh, look at that! Another cumin. Look at that. In fact, I might I might use that one so I can use that one up. Well, this one's probably been expired for a decade, but I I don't see any use by date. I mean, spices can last for a long time if they're kept dry. Although, Hong Kong's very humid, so it's probably not... I mean, you can tell it, you just, with spices, don't worry about the use by date. Give it a sniff, and if it doesn't smell bad, if the oils in it haven't, like, gone rotten, then they're all good. Use the, use your, use your nose. Um, use by dates is just suggestions. And, um, I don't really trust the manufacturers, because they kind of, put an earlier use by date so you throw out perfectly good ingredients and then um, you buy another one so it's good for them because they sell more things but it's kind of a waste I mean we've got to look after our our earth we only got one until we go and colonize Mars and then we'll have a second one but that isn't that realistic so uh, I could have put some coconut oil in it too but uh, olive oil is healthy enough now I'm going to let that simmer for a while until it's really soft. Um, maybe I'll put a bit of water in it too, that will help. Put a bit of water. So, uh, I don't know. I haven't watched enough YouTube to see how, like, Indians make curry. Because they would have probably a better technique and like I don't want like a Indian Uncle Roger if you know who that is like coming to me and oh no, this is gonna be really racist but anyway uh, Uncle Roger's racist should I do it all right I'll do it people are gonna hate me um, I don't want like Indian version of Uncle Roger like he would his name would be Uncle Roger or some Indian name um, going uh that is not how you make curry oh no Anyway, okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Um, so racist. Okay, uh, there is... And by the way, I love Indians. I have, like, Indian friends, so uh, I'm not racist, right? That's what they say. Um, Alright. That is softening. I'll put this back on the tripod. Free up my hands a bit. Um, and that's going to take a little while. So the next thing is, I've had this water heating up for the past hour, like literally. Um, but that's for my spaghetti. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is like a bit of a fusion dish. We call it fusion, but really it's like wrong. That's what it really is. It's wrong. Spaghetti with uh, beef. Um, What's it called? Curry. Now, I need my spaghetti, so where do I put it? Oh, I think I still have it in the kitchen. Oh yes, I do, spaghetti. So, um, it takes about 15 minutes to make. I think that's enough for one serve. I'm a bit hungry, so maybe that. That much. Okay. 
gonna put it in there. Probably the water should be hotter. Uh, spaghetti and then onion. And then all these spices are gonna go in. So I'm gonna get a nice shot of that since I got time. Oh, there you go. No wonder, I got two of them. So I guess this one can go back. Those are my spices I'm going to use. And uh, let's get a nice little dolly. Let's get a dolly, because um, in film you put it on a little train. And then you would like move the camera. Or tracking? Sometimes it's called a tracking shot. I think it's out of focus. Let's try that again. But um, I'm doing this all handheld. Uh, and I'm using the camera in body gyro stabilization to make it to take out all the little shakes afterwards. It's a It's like the way a, a GoPro works. You shoot it or the new ones anyway You shoot it a bit wider and then it actually knows the way the camera is moving because it's got an Accelerometer in it um, which is going to give us gyroscopic data uh, It's going to know if the camera moves like down or up or like what it knows where the camera is in the 3d space it's like amazing right really good technology if i do that it knows it went that way and it can apply the appropriate amount of uh stabilization uh, which it does by cropping in the image and then counteracting the movement okay uh, <laughs> actually you know what this onion didn't make me tear up that's Amazing! I'm usually in tears in this, some of these videos. You, you should have seen the one where I made okra and um, got me like twice during the filming that <coughs> when I was eating it, I did um, a fast forwarder that got me again. It's like powerful. Anyway, so uh, spaghetti there is um, cooking and this is also softening. I should really clean up my bench. See, like, I don't know what that is. I think it's sesame black sesame seed which uh, I will make another video on later because I think it's another super food delicious and easy recipe this actually isn't that easy you know I mentioned before the oxtail was um, which is here was pre-cooked in the pressure cooker uh, oh this is starting to burn a bit okay so onion is softening um, oil is quite important in curries by the way like you need quite a lot of oil in curries you you can't make a curry without oil um, it's just it's like it's like a water to your cocktail water to your coffee you know you need it and uh, people are terrified of oil but um and fats but uh, apparently it doesn't actually make you fat it's a lie that's been sold to us. I think that's a whole nother video. Anyway, um, I've got coconut oil, but it's a bit solid. So I'll put a little bit more uh, olive oil here. See that? And then... Let that soften up. I should have probably blended that because... Uh, I think curries actually don't have solid bits of onion in it. It kind of disappears. Also, you should probably put some garlic in it, but my garlic is all out. Got my um, spice rack, but most of this stuff is haven't cooked for ages. I do have some ginger, but it's really I don't know if, that, if that's any good. It's all like shriveled, and I'll cut it up later and see. I think the rest of this can probably go in the bin. It's just bits of spices, like chilies, and I'll clear that. Okay, keeping myself busy. Okay, so now I've got the spice bag like that. That goes back there. Give this a bit of a stir. Look, I, I can do it two hands. 
And my spaghetti doesn't have enough water. It's like all these like little non-proper cooking techniques I'm trying to okay so probably shouldn't do that I think if someone was Italian they'd freak out when I like you know Italian Uncle Roger Uncle uh, how, how do you do Italian accent uh, it's me I'm Mario uh, Uncle Roger yeah uh, Uncle Roger if he is so see that he would uh, have a heart attack that's not how you make a spaghetti this channel is damn racist. I think in like another 10 years, like this will totally be not acceptable and I, I'd have to censor it. But um, in, is like in accents in like the year 2022 is somewhat acceptable. I mean, I'm just mimicking. I, I don't hate any race actually. I think people are, I think people are actually quite awesome as long as you get the right people. A lot of people are very selfish, but people in general are pretty awesome. Um, and plus, I'm gonna blow my nose, which is why I'm leaving the kitchen. But um, yeah, I'm um, Chinese, Australian-born Chinese, if you didn't know. Which is why my English is like, like Aussie. But I look Chinese. Grew up in Australia. But I'm in Hong Kong, so uh, I'm an ABC, an Australian-born Chinese. Um, and then it's like Chinese Hong Kong because people like to make a distinction um, and we speak Cantonese here in Hong Kong uh, my Cantonese is terrible um, but you know trying to government's trying to make people speak more Mandarin because it's the official um, language of China Mandarin and actually you know it's like I think it is nice to, I mean, people love their languages and stuff, but it is nice to have one standard. Like, like English is the standard of the world for language, and it's, it's great, because if, if you learn English, you can pretty much talk to almost anyone in the world, because most people, even if their English is bad, they can understand a little bit of English. They might not speak it flu, uh, flu, flu, fluently, but um, uh, you can kind of, you know, get through a basic conversation with them, which is important. I mean, it's kind of annoying having all these languages, I think. I mean, it's a good thing, but I suck at learning languages, so uh, I just don't have the memory for it. So for me, I would like to have one language and then I'd be able to be so much easier, wouldn't it? Okay, so, um, well, this spice is... Okay, so I've got my uh, five spice powder. I'm just gonna put it a bit, so like, got my tablespoon, yeah, that would do, you know, you don't have to be that precise. Um, actually, you should, probably should, last time I had so much wasabi and almost killed me. Um, okay, so next is my cumin powder, you can put a bit more cumin, like that much. Put a bit more if you like it. If you don't like it, you put less. Cumin powder, okay, so that goes back. Um, black pepper. Hard to put a bit in there because that's, I gotta grind it off. Okay, and then turmeric. Turmeric is like a super healthy food, so I'm gonna put like a lot in it. Like more than needed because I wanna be healthy. Okay. Mm, turmeric. Then I have my galangal. Galangal is like Thai, um, Thai ginger. It's slightly different flavor, but um, similar. You can kind of substitute, substitute one for another. Uh, way too much galangal. I'm gonna taste a bit of that. Yep, tastes like um ginger to me. I I wouldn't even know how to I wouldn't even know how to um describe the difference between galangal and ginger. Okay, softening these onions, uh, mixed in all the spice, put a bit more water in, because uh, it's 
getting a little dry in my curry. Okay. Refill my Brita type filter. This is the one from me or Xiaomi. Actually quite a good one. It's, I like Xiaomi stuff, quite cheap. I like things that are good and inexpensive. Okay, so actually this is starting to look like a curry. I may have put the um, spice in a bit too early. Um, needs more water too. I may have put the spice in a bit early, but because there may there may be a better way to make it. Um, there may be an optimal way because I don't know if if I put all the spice in now, if I cook it for a long time, is it gonna like hurt the flavor of it by the amount of heat? And I should put it at the at the end, or should I put it, or should I put it at the start? and have it cook longer so all the flavors can mix. Um, it would be a, a good experiment if someone could be bothered to do that. Come, I'm coming up with all the YouTube channel ideas. Okay, I'm gonna try to al dente my spaghetti. Um, so, you know, that's, you can kind of tell it's getting ready because it's, uh, you can feel the firmness and it's starting to float. So it has absorbed the water. Now this actually needs more water. I'm trying to get the right consistency. And I think uh, it's time to put this in. Make the flavors mix a bit. So it's a whole bunch of oxtail together. It does have bones and there are the bones in oxtail are kind of weird. It's like a spinal cord, but um some people might be grossed out by that because they're not used to like this sort of food, but um, you know, be adventurous and get used to it. I mean, like eating prawns or animals might be horrible to some people, but for others, it's delicious. You know, like one country's national dish might be horrible, but it's like something that other people like desire. So that's my curry so far. Uh, I have forgotten one ingredient. Or well, I haven't forgotten because I, I I'm thinking of it now, but um, it needs chili powder. And I do have that. I'm gonna let that simmer for a while, try to absorb the flavor. And this looks like it's almost ready, so. Can probably take it off the heat soon. But um, where did I put it? I need chili powder, so it's time to go to my box of spices to the chili one. Uh, and I bought, um, all right, there's uh, some Sichuan chili. What's this? I think it's a soup pack, pre made one. I need my chili powder. Uh, I bought like a whole bunch of uh, a huge bag of chili powder when I was in Korea. Um, now, if I could only find it, it's here somewhere. Yeah. Huh? Where the heck's my chili? Oh, this is losing all the water. I'll turn it down a bit. That's simmering, so that's okay. Um, chili, chili. Chili powder. Where the heck did I put it? You see, this is why mise-en-scene is important, because uh, you either forget it, or when you need to find it, you can't find it in time, and you end up overcooking everything. Oh, you know what? I think it's in here. Yeah. So, uh, hot pepper powder um, from Korea. But, uh, you know, doesn't, like, it won't, it might taste, it might end up tasting slightly different because it's not all, like, 
Indian food or whatever, but it's, you know, curry is a curry. It, it will taste like resembling some sort of curry. My spaghetti is all wrong. It's not, you know, it really cook spaghetti like that, but uh, oh well, you know. I mean, the important thing is you can eat it, and when you eat it, it tastes good, and it's like, you know, relatively healthy for you. Uh, that is a lot of chili. Um, now, last time I put a, I know how spicy this is, so last time I put like a, a, a tablespoon, and it wasn't spicy enough, so I can put a bit more this time. Two tablespoons, and actually, you know what, I'll put a little bit more. That'll be fine. I can eat quite spicy actually. Um, although, if I say that, like the wasabi, I thought, like, in the, in the last video, I, I ate, like, I put way too much wasabi in my, um, in my iced okra, and it got me, like, really bad. I mean, I was alright. Like, I'm pretty good with chili, so it was painful, but, and I didn't, I wasn't, like, dying, but it still wasn't not pleasant for like a minute or something. Okay, oh, and uh, salt. You'd probably want to put some salt in here too. Um, but uh, let's taste it first and see see if it's uh, in line with what we're expecting. So, um, oh, I do have a spoon. So, um, yep, let's give it the taste test. Mm, yeah, definitely need some salt. I'm gonna put the salt shaker. Oh, this is really cool, by the way. I don't have much uh, salt left. It's uh, that Himalayan salt, the pink Himalayan salt. But, um, look at that. I can be lazy and uh, it will grind for me. Takes a uh, three AA batteries. Oh, I'm not gonna show you. Maybe I'll do a review on it later. Do a little zoomy on that, and um, it's almost ready. Probably need a little bit more water. I'm just just do it by eye, you know. Cooking is also an art. You can do it scientifically, but um, once you get a feel for it, you kind of know, you know, that you need a bit more water or it's too much water or whatever. Spaghetti, it's probably done by eye. Again, so I'm going to um, somehow drain it without the right tools for it. Oh, I do have the tools. I'm going to drain that spaghetti. Okay. Not sure if you can even see that. Um, Yeah, you probably saw it on the edge. Let this, let the flavors in my curry uh, mix a bit. And um, my uh, improvised curry will be re ready very soon. It looks a bit of a, like a mess, but curry is kind of like that. I think the onion needs to be a bit softer, so uh, I will give it a little bit more time. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how you make it. So, uh, I'm going to magically cut the video. I never cut, but I'm going to let that go for another minute. And then we will do a taste test. And then you can watch me eat. And I will even do some ASMR sort of sounds. Because um, some people really like that. Well, here we go. You don't actually see me do cuts that often on this channel, but... um. There you go, there's a cut. Um, and I also mispressed the record button. Good thing I checked. Uh, I love this flippy screen on this one. The Sony A7 Mark IV, it's a great little camera. It's kind of, it's the entry level, it's kind of expensive though, it's not cheap. Um, but anyway, it is 
is what it is. So there's my curry. I let it simmer for a few extra minutes. And I've got my spaghetti, my fusion Indian Chinese curry, whatever it is. Um, so, oh, well, while the camera's still zoomed in, let's get some nice shots. I'm gonna put in the oxtail. So it's so soft, the bone, the meat's fallen off the bone, but you can see like, that's actually like a spinal cord kind of thing. The tail is actually like an extension of the spinal cord, but all the meat's fallen off it. Um, so it's a bit weird if you're not used to it, but it's a delicious cut of meat. And I got introduced to it by a chef called Kwame, who is um, Jamaican background, and he made, he made this, and then I was like, oh, wow, oxtail's great. And the smaller sections of the tail kind of look like that. Um, can you see? Probably not. Uh, yeah. See that? Yeah, there you go. I hope it focuses and stays in focus. Um, it's like a bone in the middle and then like the tail actually around it. Uh, if you're saying yuck, I mean like, you know, you're eating the ribs of a cow or the belly or the neck or whatever but can't eat the tail same thing it's all meat some people don't eat meat and i think that's also quite kind to animals but you know we did evolve to eat this food to be omnivores so yeah nature and life is cruel okay that's my curry a very delicious get a zoom in Oh, is, oh, there you go. Get a zoom in. And, um, yeah. Give it a proper taste and, um, enjoy my lunch. Uh, I'll probably do a video later on, um, the pressure cooker and all that because I, I do know that I didn't, um, show you how I made the oxtail. But, uh, that could be a whole other video in itself. And this one's already pretty long enough all right I'm quite hungry actually so let's give the meat a bit of a try See, that's a bit of a uh, oxtail that's fallen off the bone mmm nice um need salt I didn't put enough in before which is um not a problem at all. Um, not enough salt, easily fixed. Too much salt, um, harder to fix because uh, then you need to add more other ingredients. There you go. I love this little salt shaker, but um, it's center of gravity. It's quite like, it's, the base is too small. It's easy to knock off the table. And then I, I had two of them. I had a pepper one, but that fell off and broke. Um, so while it looks cool, having that oval shape, it's not very practical. Ah, all right, mix in the salt a bit and um, yeah, time to do some ASMR. Got the lav here. Don't know if you can see it. Uh, now you can see it, the road. Lav mic. Put it close to my mouth and um, yeah. I mean, actually, I think it's kind of disgusting, but you know, it's a bit yucky. But who will some people love this stuff, the ASMR sounds. So um, we'll go for that. I think it needs a bit more spice as well. It could be hotter. Um, then again, my tolerance for spice is quite high. Um, uh, yeah, I like it. It's quite rich. Um, curry is good for you. It's got that curry flavor. Um, needs more spice. And very beefy. So, you know, that, that distinctive cow protein taste of cow. You know, it tastes like steak, but like... Well, actually, more like meat pie, you know. Like, it's that slow-cooked flavor. Um, also, oxtail is very high in collagen, so it's probably very good for your skin. In fact, when you cook it, you can see that the, the broth, the soup, 
that comes out of it. If you put it in the fridge, it solidifies like jelly. In fact, you don't even need to put it in the fridge. It, if you put it and let it cool, it becomes like a jelly and it's all the collagen. I'm sure it's good for your skin. Alright, some more ASMR pleasure for you. And um, the spaghetti, yeah, did a good job this time. Kept an eye on it. It's a al dente texture. Even though this spaghetti is like the the one Italians hate because um, they're very homophobic. This brand. Oh no, it's not. It's, that's Botelli. This one's a a different brand. Anyway, um, tastes pretty good to me. So yeah, um, that's my lunch and um. Probably should end the video now, so uh, what I'll do again is um, do a little time lapse of me eating a bit and then I'll cut it. Um, and then, yeah, you can uh, I'll put up some thumbnails of other videos you could watch if you like this one. If, if this one, like, if you haven't clicked away, because I'm pretty sure that the viewer retention would be like not even 1% to make it to the whole video. Like, this is, like, if you got to the end here, that's pretty amazing. Or you're pretty bored, or, I don't know. I mean, or you got some good value out of it. That's also cool. Uh, and that, I mean, I sometimes, most of the time I don't even watch it, you know, from beginning to end. I just do run through the practice of recording. Um, but sometimes I'll just play it in the background when I'm doing something and just kind of self, um, what's the word, just review, self-review and um, see if I can make it better, make it funnier or faster or see if I was natural enough or, you know, self-review. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, enough talking. I'll eat, check out these thumbnails and um, if you like this, I guess I'll catch you on the next one on Josh Town's Video Diary.